West Pumpkin Cove is basically a French Acadian village. It's a pretty small town. Everybody knows everybody and everybody seems to get along and it's a good place to live. I'm the oldest of 13 kids and most of them are living in Pumnico. It's probably the biggest community in, in the municipality. The population is around 1,850 or so. You have your restaurants, you have grocery stores, and everything's close. I like that. You don't have to go far. Uh, the basic industry is the fishing industry. Uh, lobster fishing, dragging, fish plants. There's a few restaurants, but basically it all relies on the fishing industry. It's very windy. The majority of the time, it's quite windy here. I guess it is windy. <laughs> Every day. Windy, yeah. This is why we have a wind farm. There's not too many days that it just doesn't generate power. <laughs> when they first come here, people seem to, yeah, they, they thought it was pretty neat. It was kind of neat that we were picked to have a wind farm. It's unique. The wind farm, well, it, it, it was a, quite an undertaking. Uh, we spent a lot of time on it in our planning committee, uh, district planning. We were like the first wind farm in Nova Scotia, so we didn't have much to go by, but uh, we had many meetings and many discussions, and we checked with some of the other uh, uh, communities, especially out west in, in Ontario or, or Manitoba, where they have wind farms, and we worked, we, we got some information from them, but we basically, kind of did it here on our own and, you know, at our public meetings. And challenges were land use bylaws, uh, try to come up with something satisfactory that, you know, that's not going to uh, affect the, uh, the people of the area. And uh, I found that the uh, Atlantic Wind Power Company, uh, they were good to deal with. We had all our open meetings. They had open house here at the fire station with, with uh, uh, all kinds of displays and you know they were they were good of course they were fairly new to it and they uh, they were in a learning process also but uh, it, it was well well done I think there was a lot of hype everyone was excited west side east side we were all excited knowing that they were going to come here the first two windmills were built during uh, about six years ago, and then uh, the rest were built a year or so after. During the, the construction phase, we had a lot of traffic. Our end of the village here was quite peaceful, and uh, all of a sudden it uh, became very busy. Trucks required to bring the 17 uh, turbines. It was something to see because there was a lot of trucks, and the trucks going by with the towers on. When they started making the roads, there were dump trucks going by all day. They were, they were hauling about 125 loads of gravel a day and then these big excavators were around and it was a big project. We had trucks going all hours of the night, um, either with concrete or gravel or pieces for the windmills. It was just a constant noise. I would have liked that the contractors and the people that were putting up the wind farm would have explained to us more in detail what was going to happen, uh, that they were going to make noise. Uh, when they're building them, it caused a little bit of commotion because there's a lot of cranes and a lot of big trucking, um, especially on a road that usually doesn't have that much, that much traffic. But uh, after the initial build, um, there, wasn't, there wasn't any of the traffic anymore. So it was, it was a little bit noisy right at first, but after all the big trucks were done, then you didn't hear very much. For us over here, I don't know about the people on the West Pemnico, but for us over here, we kept watching them go up daily or, you know. And first there were a few, and then over time, there, there is what there is now. And it was quite exciting. This wind farm is 17 turbines placed in two rows of five. One row was four and the other row 
of three, and starting from five, going out to three to, towards the end. They're big. You don't realize how big they are until you actually go physically there and look up. They are huge. They're like, what, 300 feet tall? The blades are 100 plus feet long, and they run so smooth that you can hardly even hear them. And it's just, they're just kind of silent standing there, but they're just so big that I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of a wonderful thing to look at. It's just interesting to, to see what man can make to, you know, to get power. They use the wind farm basically for walking, biking, cross country skiing, just bringing your kids on their bikes or your dogs for a walk. It's a, a really good place to go. I go up and down the roads for a walk and I jog and I do a little bit of hunting there and I, I don't think it's done any difference. There is still deer. I, I hunt pretty much under them. And uh, yeah, if I just want to go for a walk, it's a nice place to go. The roads are really nice, they're long, and you can just get off the main road. We were walking there actually last Sunday. It was a beautiful day, and uh, we went for a walk with some friends along the shore. And they turn. I did not know this, but apparently when the wind changes direction, the turbine, the whole machine turns. And I said, well, what's that noise? Because it was quite loud, and it was the machine turning to, to get the wind to spin them. It's actually, it's really interesting. I had never seen anything like this before. We've seen smaller ones, but I enjoy them. We just go and visit. Go to the end of the road and turn back. <laughs> Anyone that comes to visit us, <laughs> we take them over to the wind farm to show them. I think they're really beautiful for me. I do, they're very picturesque. Uh, from my house to the wind farm, it's 500 meters, and you come out of the driveway, turn left, and drive. Uh, and well, of course, you'll be able to see the first turbine, which is number 13. So there is the noise factor. Here, I'm 500 meters from the first one, and it's a bit close. I would prefer uh, a kilometer. A kilometer would give us enough trees to act as a buffer. The wind farm is relatively about a thousand feet from my house. They make noise, but not a whole lot of noise. Certain winds, it's louder than others. Some, some nights you don't hear it at all, but it's still not. It's just something you, you get your body in sync with that you hear after a while, I guess, and it's all good. It's not bad at all. <laughs> They're kind of good neighbors to have. They don't bug you too much, I guess. I live about 1,500 feet to the wind farm. Well, living so close to the wind farm, I, all I experience is a, a little bit of noise. Different, it depends what kind of wind, and a light southwest wind, they're a little louder. But on a regular day, they're not very loud, and I can see them. I get out of my vehicle, and I walk into the house, or I walk around the house, and I don't even realize it, that I've been living there for, for a year now, and I was at my, a little bit closer for five years before that. It's created a little bit of uh, income for the municipality. Not a whole lot, but we're getting a little better than 200,000 a year in taxes on that, which we were getting basically nothing before. It provides jobs for a few people uh, in the community. The people that come and see the windmills end up eating at our restaurants, gassing up at our gas stations, stopping into the museums or the village. So I guess indirectly we're getting payback out of it. We've had people from, you know, even an hour's drive will come down just to see the windmills you know, on a nice sunny day or something. A lot of pictures, a lot of people come with their cameras, take pictures, and it's, it's nice. It brought in a, a new thing, it's green energy. It brought business to the local stores and to the motels. It brought uh, jobs to some people. There's, there's, not, there's not a whole lot of disadvantages from my point of view. I say build them, <laughs> build them, because 
it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot better than, than burning coal and oil. And uh, it's, it's a good thing, so why not? To me, renewable energy means the way of the future. It's just less burning fossil fuels or coal or less pollution, and it's good for the environment, it's good for the planet. Well, it certainly is efficient since there's no pollution, or I think that is the way, are the windmills. Yes, it is. It's important. <laughs> it gives us cleaner air to breathe. It's a good thing for the future. If I had to choose between a wind turbine or a smokestack to look at every morning, I would choose the turbine. Over. And that's honest. Well, it's being produced by not burning oil or gas or diesel or, you know, it's nature provided, you know, it's green. <laughs> I know there's been school bus tours. Uh, different schools from the area, the Armouth County area, have brought uh, cl whole classrooms of kids t to come and see them, which causes them to have a class in school about it, to learn more. I think the kids are really amazed by the size and the whole excitement of the whole thing. And it's the little ones that I think we've got to catch their attention to bring it into the next generation. Like I said earlier, it's clean energy and it's, 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 going, to be, it's going to help. Uh, I mean, one little wind farm is not going to help a whole lot, but, but uh, if we have enough you know, uh, through the province and, and through the, the country, it'll help clean our air and, and uh, you know, it'll be a lot better future for, the, for, the, uh, for, the, for everybody concerned.